Good afternoon, St. John's. Good afternoon, Cowan Heights. Good afternoon, Newfoundland and Labrador. Beautiful day out there. A little cooler than yesterday, not much, but slightly. So guess what that means? No, no motorcycle ride. That's not what it means. Not today. I'm just, uh, last few days I just have not been in the mood to touch my bike. So uh, I'm forcing myself out today though. I got my gear all packed up and I'm going to head to Butterpot Park and camp for the night. A little solo trip. It's going to be interesting because I'm, because there's a fire ban on the go and usually the fire keeps me busy for three or four hours in the evening. So now I got to figure out what I'm going to do with that three or four hours. How is that going to play on me mentally? <clears throat> it should be interesting. So anyway, I'll, uh, I won't see you on the bike, but I'll see you on the, in my truck pretty soon. For those of you not familiar with the location of Butterbot Provincial Park, as you can see, it's on the Avalon Peninsula, not too far from St. John's. Here's a closer look in, well, in relationship to St. John's. St. John's is right there, as you can see. And uh, Butterbot Park, obviously down there. So it's not too far to go. It's only, it's less than 40 kilometers, right, 33 and a half or so and it's only about a half an hour drive so it shouldn't be too bad as i alluded to earlier my goal is not to get far away from here right now i'm just uh, i need to take baby steps so that's why i'm only going as far as Butterpot park it gets me out of the house gets me out of my head and it's close and convenient so why not right trying to figure out what to eat is a challenge breakfast is fairly easy i just got a couple packs of uh oatmeal that's all i'll have for breakfast and this is pretty much all stuff i need for coffee my stove i got my water got my coffee cup got my coffee and that's about it for there plus i popped a bag of popcorn so i'm all set for the night that's my snack for later since i'm uh, driving in my truck i got more space i'm not sure how well these will turn out you get these from Costco, it's uh, rice and chicken. I've never used these before on a trail. I've never cooked these outside of a microwave before. So I'm assuming since it's in a sealed bag that I should be able to clip the corner of it to let the steam out and just lay it inside my pot and let it cook and heat up that way. That's my plan anyway, we'll see how it goes. And I got this guy just waiting, waiting for me. Contrabando. Smuggler's Cove. I forgot it last camping trip, so it's on my list to make sure I remember it this time. But you're going to stay there for now. Don't go anywhere. Well, I made it to my vehicle. That's a good sign. I uh, I was that close to not, uh, not bothering with this trip today. I was sitting there drinking my coffee, drinking some water, and uh, the mood for this trip just isn't there but I'm still going I'm forcing myself through it so that's what I got to do tonight so uh, it's weird like, I'm going on a camping trip I should be excited over it. I got a beer and everything but uh, that's it when you're in the mood you're in the mood when you're not you're not but first I'm gonna be pulling in here and grabbing a coffee another one yeah I don't have any coffees ahead so far today I think three so it's after two o'clock now, so I'll probably have one more, and that'll do me until I'm at the campground. New cream and a uh, old-fashioned plain donut. 
You got it. Anything else? Uh, no, that's it. It's 3.53. Thank you. Hi. And I'll, uh, I'll use what's on this. Thank you, you too. Well, I was going to get a, uh, a farmer's wrap, but uh, I forgot what I wanted to order when I was at the uh, drive through window, so I ended up with one of these guys. A donut. Oh well. That's, that's what, almost 2.30 now. I never eat since about 10 o'clock, so this will do me until supper time. I should have got Boston cream. But I knew that if I got a Boston cream, it would be a mess because that chocolate melts and gets over everything. So I went with the plane instead. Got my coffee gone just in time. I'm at the park. Must pull up and check in here now. Have any of you been to uh, Butterpot Park before? I've been here years ago and uh, anyway I'm lost. <laughs> I have no idea where I'm going. Like the sites aren't marked very well. There's no signs up saying that sites from this to this number are this direction or anything like that. It's uh, I'm actually quite stressed over it actually. So I'm heading back out to the main gate to find out again 
which direction I'm supposed to be going in. Because I have a feeling he sent me in the wrong direction. Not that he sent me, but he probably just didn't give me the right direction to go. Oh well, I'll drive in circles for a bit. I was worried about killing time. Well, not anymore. I think I'm on track now. I was right, I was going the wrong direction. I was uh, heading down to day use area, which is where the beach is. I needed to come this way. So, all is good. Well, they do have campsite markers. <laughs> as long as you're on the right road to the campsites, Not a bad little sight. The only downside is the fire ban is on, so I won't be able to use that tonight. Now, best spot for a tent. Thinking right there. Probably the most widely used spot. Ground looks hard. I got a feeling it's going to be a tough time digging stakes in. <laughs> Before I get too far into this, I gotta swap out my hat. This one gives me nice shade around all over my face and on my neck. Being a redhead, I need that. So this time I never brought my hammer, not hammer, my axe with me, which I usually use to pound into stakes, so I need a stick or a rock. I'm going to try something. I watch uh, Lone Wolf 902 on face on, on uh, YouTube quite a bit. He's, uh, he's a little more into this than I am. But one of the things he said was that uh, if you see a fallen tree, there's usually rocks. So there's a fallen tree right there. I'm gonna go and see if there's any rocks that I can use as a hammer. And look at that. By golly, he was right. Lots of rocks there. Perfect.
Since I got nothing to do, I'm gonna give you a tour of my tent, my brand new tent. This here is the Durston Mid X1. That's the name of the company there. And this is the uh, solid version. In other words, uh, you see how up here is, is made out of mosquito net. The uh, other version, the whole thing is mosquito net, but this one, it's called solid because the bottom half and even back here is, uh, is, is solid. <laughs> I guess that's why they call it solid. But that would be great in the winter months. Just keep snow off you. <laughs> and uh, it's a one person. Now, uh, might not look like a lot of space, but that's a 25 inch pad in there. It's a long, it's a wide pad, so it looks like it takes up a lot of room. But you got space on the back there behind you, and you got space down there at the foot of your bed too to lay stuff. And there's a couple pockets up around the top as well. And the stuff that you don't store inside, you have these big giant vestibules right here. Because once this closes, it's all enclosed like that, see? And you're protected, and so is your gear. And if you go to the other side, you got the exact same setup. You got those big vestibules where you can store, for example, you could store your backpack right there and all your gear. And then the other one out front, you could put your cooking stuff so you can boil up your breakfast or your coffee while sitting inside the tent. Let's keep it open. The zippers on these are all nice and water sealed. I'm not sure if I can do this with one here. Probably not. And right here, see this little thing here? That's that's a piece of metal or magnet. And hanging down right there is a little piece of webbing or something with a magnet in it. So you just click it right there and it holds your, uh, holds your door in place. It's not the greatest and highest winds. So the next time I come, I'm going to bring a couple clothespins so I can put them down here. Got to get some water empty.
Not sure why I made that coffee right now. Thought I needed one, but I probably don't. I should have just cooked supper, which is what I'm doing. But that coffee may still be warm after supper, so even if it's slightly warm, that's good enough. We'll see how it goes. But it's time to get some grub on. Let's see how this works out. Chicken and rice. Now, let's see how this works. Throw that in there. Just gotta puncture a hole in first. Looks good. I say that'll taste pretty good once I get going here. Tasty. You get these in uh, those boxes at Costco. Cheaper than one of those twenty-five dollar backpacking meals. <laughs> So if you're curious what's in these, in case you decide to get them, you got uh, chicken, rice, there's some carrots in there, there's uh, some peppers, some beans, some corn, it's a little bit of a mixture of things, and all the different flavors, they go nice together, it's like they complement each other. In other words, it's pretty good for a meal in a bag. Meal is done, so now I get to check out my coffee. I didn't have to worry about it cooling down because it's still pretty hot. So that's good. Now I can sip on my coffee for a little while and relax, listen to some music. Those clouds behind me don't look too uh, promising. I was reading the uh, forecast yesterday and they said they were calling for some showers on uh, Thursday morning. I think today is, I don't even know what day of the week it is. I think it's Thursday. <laughs> yeah, actually it's Thursday. So now I don't know what I was saying or was going to say. See how messed up I get? My thoughts, they keep getting tangled. Yes, I was listening to the forecast or watching it and uh, said we're supposed to get rain Friday morning and it almost looks like we might get it a little earlier by the looks of those clouds. So we shall see. Maybe my first night in the tent will be the first time I get to check and see how well it holds up against uh, some rain.
So this almost turned into a disaster, by the way, because I, I'm lucky that I brought these other pegs that I have. I have these long, eight-inch spikes, that like, like big nails kind of thing, for tent pegs. And uh, the ground here is like solid. It's like rock. And uh, the pegs that I had originally picked out to go with the uh, tent, uh, they couldn't go in the ground here. I smashed them and smashed them, but no luck. But luckily I had the other ones. So... Uh, Here's to, here's to overpacking. Guys, I don't know if it's the weed or if it's that nice delicious meal I had for supper, but this campsite looks pretty, pretty awesome, I gotta say. I love this setup. I'm gonna show you again. Look at that. This table that my son got me for Christmas one year. This chair that he got me for Christmas one year. And now I just step back and take a look and enjoy what I created today. Yeah, hopefully this makes me uh, get out and do some more camping. My goal next is to uh, start going on East Coast Trail, picking the easier trails to start off with and uh, just go out, even if it's a five kilometer hike, just go out and spend the night over the uh, Atlantic Ocean. That sounds like a plan, I think. Look what I found. Contrabando. That's the uh, Smuggler's Cove beer. See, it's got their nice logo on the back. I had this last two camping trips ago. I had this with me. And my goal was to bring it one with me every time I go camping. But the last time I forgot, I made sure not to forget this time. So I'm going to crack this open now and enjoy it. I'm just admiring the can on it. I guess you could say I enjoy admiring cans. <laughs> Sorry, had to. Dad joke. Anyway, here she comes. Open it slowly in case she shook up. Oh man. Smells good. It's perfect. This is just what you need when you're out on a camping trip like this. Contraband, oh my god, this tastes good. Yeah, definitely get out to your nearest liquor store and, uh, and pick up uh, pick up some. They come in singles. I gotta go get some more. This is my last one now. I'm not sure if you remember, on the way here I mentioned a couple of reasons I'm coming to Butterpot Park. Butterpot? Yeah, Butterpot Park. And uh, one of the reasons was to try out new gear. Like I have a new air mattress and a new tent that I want to try out. Which, the tent, I mean it looks good, <laughs> but I haven't tried it out yet. So I'll see how that goes tonight. But the other reason I'm here is because I've um, I've been overcome with a lot of anxiety lately. Uh, I mean, that's normal. I've been like this for years and years and years. But uh, I was 
pumped to uh, start camping overnight out on the East Coast Trail. I been watching YouTube video after YouTube video on uh, wild camping and uh, I ended up spending a little bit of money and ordered a new tent, got a new mattress, the whole works, all these things and getting prepared for these overnights on the East Coast Trail. But something happened the day, like as soon as my tent arrived, that very day it arrived and I had it in my hands, it's like something twisted in my head i don't know what how to explain it really but it's like the interest or enthusiasm or whatever it might be about doing the uh overnights on the east coast trail it uh, just uh, it, it vanished it's like i suddenly don't want nothing to do with the east coast trail i don't want to go on the east coast east coast trail it's weird how like it just just it's just like that i went from obsessed with getting gear planning my trips which routes i'm going to do first and all that stuff to just wanting nothing to do with it whatsoever and in addition to that i started to get very anxious about it and that turned into fear and so it got to the point where the thought of going out on the east coast trail overnight actually terrifies me and that's why I'm here in Butterpot Park, because it took a few days to build up to it, uh, but I, I forced myself out to try to help get myself out of my head. And um, yeah, I don't know if, uh, if this is going to help or not, because this is like living at home anyway. You you got neighbors, uh, so if something goes wrong, you, somebody's there. Or, to help you that kind of thing you got access to get out of here my, my vehicle's there although i just smoked a joint so i might want to hold off a bit oh and drank a beer speaking of which <clears throat> so yeah this is close to home it's far enough away from home i guess to uh to feel that sense of being away, but it's uh, close enough that uh, like I'm only 30 minutes away. Like I can be home in 30 minutes, well, an hour, by the time I pack up. And uh, and I needed that comfort. It gives me a bit of it's a comfort blanket. And uh, I'm hoping that just pushing myself to get out here tonight to set up that tent to try the mattress have another one of those beers it'll inspire me to push a little harder and start tackling the east coast trails and like i said it's got to be the easy ones because i am so out of shape that uh, i can't drive into a campground beats me out <laughs> yeah that's why i went on my suv today and not my motorcycle no just kidding i had to had to take that today and the reason is because I had my driveway resealed and uh, not supposed to drive on it for 24, 48 hours. So uh, I couldn't uh, take my motorcycle out of my garage. So that's why I'm on, on that thing today. And it was kind of nice, actually. I'd sit back, drink a coffee while I was coming in. It's, uh, it's, uh, it settles the soul, I guess you could say. But you can't beat a motorcycle ride. No, no way. So by coming out here, it uh, it's kind of challenging because tonight there's no fire because there's a fire ban. And when I go camping, I usually spend about three or four hours in front of a fire, just mesmerized by it. And... Uh, it's a, it's a, there's a connection there with nature through the fire. And I know it sounds silly, but it's there. And uh, tonight, I'm not going to have that fire because it's a band. So I got to fill that time somehow. And that's, uh, that's one of the challenges that I'm facing on purpose, knowing that I'm going to be stuck alone with my thoughts in my head and uh, really nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. So now I will have to face them.
I'll have to face my thoughts because I'm stuck here at Butterpot Park. <laughs> so now I'll have to become even more comfortable with my solitude. I usually enjoy solitude and I don't usually get lonely. It's happened a few times recently where I do feel lonely, but uh, for the most part, uh, solitude is something I embrace. Um, but we'll see how it goes tonight where I'm full of anxiety. It's been building up and building up for the last few weeks. Either way, I think I'll be all right. She's the author of five critically acclaimed books, Twilight of Democracy, Red Famine, Iron Curtain, and Autocracy, Inc. I do recommend that you read the book. Thank you. I'm not sure how many of you. Very accessible. If you have any of the most knowledgeable people I've found, Autocracy, and I'm just going to focus on the Eastern Europe and great looming questions of our time, which is how democracies can fail, which is the topic of today's conversation. Leaders have enabled autocracy. Have Putin came to the point of the world? No, I think not an autocracy, but really an autocracy. It's not an alliance. It's not really even an access. From decade after decade, you know, how could they not want to moderate? Guess what? Their politics and the blind melon, all those good things. No rain. To be clear, many of them did. So many right. Russians did in the 90s. I mean, many Russians who did, many Chinese did as well. But there is a, it is really interesting when you. It's holding off for me. Thank you. What, I forgot I packed this protein bar. Perfect snack after those popcorn. <laughs> the protein will fill me up a bit more. She's starting to get dark, as you can tell. That's why I had to throw on my puffer jacket over my fleece. Now I'm toasty. Now I'm good for a little while. Once it gets dark, I'm going inside the tent anyway. Might as well. Can't do anything out here. Guess what? It's bedtime. Now that I'm all tucked away, I'm going to enjoy some Netflix. I have a couple episodes of Sweet Tooth downloaded. I watched the first two seasons, but haven't got a chance to watch this season yet, so there's no better time than the present, right? Besides, what else am I going to do? No fire. If I had a fire, I'd be sitting out just smoking joints and enjoying the fire. But, uh... Not this trip. Did enjoy a nice podcast. Sam Harris podcast. It was quite interesting. It was on the... What causes the fall of a democracy. It was quite interesting. And of course it was relevant. And anyway, enough of that sad stuff. I'm uh, going to watch some Sweet Tooth on Netflix. Since... Uh, since that was what, uh, don't know what I'm saying. Anyway, I'm going to go watch Sweet Tooth. You probably can't see them very well, but it's my little blue pills and a white one.
<clears throat> no, they're not the good blue pills. These, well, they're good because these knock me out. That's my sleeping medication and an anti-anxiety med, I believe the other one is. Or an antidepressant, I can't remember. Well, I gotta say, that was a good idea, bringing that, uh, or downloading those uh, TV shows from Netflix. TV shows. What am I talking about? I'm watching it on my phone. Telephone shows. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was a good idea to do that. I actually did some reading earlier as well. I didn't think I was going to do any, but I actually read a few pages. Yay for me. But uh, I'm going to go watch another episode of Sweet Tooth here now. And uh, there's a good chance I won't see you again until tomorrow morning because I just took my sleeping meds along with my Indica oil. So within 30 minutes or so, I should be pretty incoherent. If anything ever happens to me while I'm in, my, while I'm in a tent, I don't think I'll ever notice it <laughs> i'm uh, once once everything kicks in i'm uh, i'm done for you can come in and rob me blind and leave me just laying here in my undies and i probably wouldn't even know that you did it anyway that's a bit getting a bit weird that conversation so i'm gonna go now and uh watch some more sweet tooth so i'll uh i'll see you in the morning Good morning. 10 to 8. I uh, woke up off and on, but I slept uh, not too bad. It'll be enough sleep to help me function today anyway. <laughs> anyway, let's get up. Get some coffee on a go. Time to get some coffee on the go before I have my breakfast. Cinnamon. It's my favorite. Brown cinnamon and brown sugar. Yeah. Whoever came up with that combination is a pure genius. Alright. Time to tear the tent down. Let's see how long this takes. It's supposed to be quick. But my luck. I'll screw something up somehow.
go. Let's see how this goes. All cleaned up. Time to go. exciting I know it was uh, it was even boring for me to a point so I can only imagine what it's like watching me being bored <laughs> anyway I maybe you got something out of it maybe you never maybe some of the chatting I was doing resonated with you or you could relate to it but uh, either way the whole point of this which I think was accomplished was just to get me out of the house get me out in nature for a night even if it is in a provincial park because it's uh, it's still it's a break from my uh, triggers I guess you could say but anyway I'm gonna sign off now because there's no sense letting you drag along with me as I'm mumbling my way back to uh, St. John's as I'm, uh, I'm struggling to come up with words to say this morning and just like that, yeah. So anyway, this one was born.
boring. This one is drag day. I'm sorry. But that's it. That's my uh, that's my personality. I'm boring and dragged out. So anyway, hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Hopefully you didn't decide to unsubscribe to me after this one. I wouldn't know if you did anyway, so go ahead if you want to. I would, I would totally understand. Because this is boring. Alright, enough of beating myself up here. I'm, I do that enough as it is. See, now I'm going to go off on another tantrum or event. Because constantly throughout the day, 24-7, I'm always beating myself up internally. All inside here. I feel inferior, I'm weak, I'm... Any negative word you can come up with, that's how I feel like I am. So here I am, jokingly making fun of myself. Talking about how boring I am. In this case, I'm probably right though. But it just goes to show that it's not an uncommon thing for me to... Uh, give myself crap over just silliest things all right i'm uh, almost late to the highway now so i'm going to let you go